Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for June 27th, 28th, 29th, and the 30th. That is Monday through Thursday. Now, if you've watched me before, you know this is going to be the introduction for all of the videos, but I will post a, a timestamp so you can bypass this introduction. Now, I will be using my Radley Valentine decks for this reading. I will use my Archangel Power Tarot cards, main reading. I'll pull one from my Guardian Angel cards. I will also pull one from my Emily Anderson Crystal deck. Now, for the overview though, I will be using my Weight Rider Traditional Tarot and my Colleen Barrett Reed The Good Tarot. I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. Just remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like, leave the rest. So we have that really big, you know, I am posting this on Friday, and we have that grand alignment going on. And, I mean, you, it's not just five planets. I mean, it is all the planets have some sort of an alignment going on. Uh, Pluto may not necessarily be quite where it needs to be, but it's within a really good um, distance. It's also, when you see the moon up there, think, you know, think that's in a way, you know, we're not going to be able to see the earth, but the earth is part of this alignment also. Now, the you know, so there's a lot of different weird things going on with this alignment. All the planets have some sort of connection. You may not be able to see them. Maybe you might need a telescope or um, binoculars, and even then you may not be able to see them all too. So we still have that going on. Um, again, this Friday, today was the biggest part of it. It will still be going on Saturday. And then it starts to slowly move. They start to slowly move away from each other. Um, I did talk to you the last time about, you know, that song Aquarius. That has been running through my mind again. And the other thing we also, you know, since this started, you know, as these all these planets were moving into this major alignment that's called the Great or Grand Planetary Alignment, um, you know, this also started, what was it, back in, was it April, May? So in May, there was a waxing moon in Leo. In June, a waxing moon in Leo. And there will be another waxing moon. I said it was on the 1st and 2nd of July. So there's some interesting energies going on. You know, I do follow the, um, you know, I do follow a few, not necessarily astrologers per se, but um, people that, you know, talk about what these, are, what's going on. And I have to tend to agree that we just don't really know what this is all about because it hasn't or it doesn't happen for us, you know, too often. Now, the um, interesting thing about this, excuse me, somebody's, uh, oh, stop that, stop that. So the interesting thing about this is that as this goes on and we do have that new moon or the waxing moon in Leo on that first and second, um, I talked about Pluto, which has been in Capricorn, and Pluto started that, um, you know, that um, in February 2022. It was in the um, birth chart of the United States back in, you know, July 4th, 1776. So, you know, it that was the same type of station it was in at that time. So that has a lot of uh, revolutionary days type of energy going on. This July 4th, it will be, it'll be almost where it was back in February, but it's going to be a little one, like one little degree off. So, you know, who's to say what's happening? Pluto is the planet of destruction, but then it is also the planet of rebirth. And we, he, Pluto has been in there in uh, Capricorn since 2008. Things will be shifting in 2023. But, and then definitely shifting in 2024. So I feel like this could be more of that, you know, maybe the tower card. Things have to come down in order for things to be built up again. Because, you know, Phoenix, the ashes of the Phoenix, the Phoenix rises from the ashes. So just put it net out there. Um, another weird little thing that came to me that I have to share is, you know, that I, I tend to feel that the... Um, you know, the planets, you know, I, I, I've said this a couple of times, it's almost like they're getting together for a conference. And you can almost feel like you can almost feel the energies just watching us. And it, it came to me how Earth is the only planet not named 
after a Greco or Greco, great Greco, um, Roman god. So it just, you know, it's just an interesting, like, why, why weren't we? Why weren't we with that? So it's kind of like, a, you know, interesting energies going on. The watchers are watching. What are we going to be doing? Who? We're not even sure. But let's see if the cards will tell us anything from higher power. One card has fallen. You know, when they fall, we need to see what they're about. And uh, did I tell you I am a, um, I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power and whatever it is, higher power, I just say, just let it come through. Um, so claircognizant is, I guess, the other word for that too. Another card has fallen and let's go ahead and cut and see where we're at, what we're doing here. Okay. Remember to always remember whatever is going on the, in the world, in the universe, we still have to live our lives and we are of the light. So we need to stay shining. We need to burn bright. Okay. Ne even though um, sometimes it doesn't seem that easy. Okay. Let's see what we have here. First card, the Hierophant. Okay. The Hierophant's an interesting card. And if you follow me, you know that I'm not necessarily a fan of the higher hierophant this is a five five you know so there is a five here five has um change energy positive negative energy it could be either one but it's a little bit on the stressful side the hierophant is the business of religion the business of government this has a very strong pisces energy here too you know i mean because that's really we are we have been in the age of pisces where it has been about rules and regulations and you know, do as I say, you know, this is the way it needs to be about doctrines, um, you know, and just, and, and it is, doesn't necessarily mean from religion, and I'm not talking spirituality, I'm not talking about connection with higher power, God, spirit, Holy Spirit, you know, Holy Spirit, I'm not talking that, I'm talking about the rules assigned by government and by um, religion. So the Hierophant has that very strong structure, that very, you know, this is the way to do it. You don't even have to think. You just know, follow the rules. Okay, you know, maybe life won't be easy, but I follow the rules. I'm not going to get in trouble. Um, but, you know, the Hierophant energy comes and, and, you know, and it's kind of a little bit of a, of like, well, you know what? Okay, you, you be you, you do you. Um, I think we're going to try something different here. So the Hierophant is kind of that energy. It's like, do we follow the rules? Do we follow the regulations? Um, do we do as they're, as we're being told? Or do we possibly do something a little bit different? I do not, you know, I'm saying, you know, it's all in love. It's all in peace. It's all in the light. Um, you know, the Hierophant sometimes, you know, like I said, it kind of, it, it's, it's very structured and there's very strict boundaries to this. So we could be seeing that this coming week. Let's see what the next card is. But then we come to the world. The world is a breakout, uh, is a breakthrough energy. This is a 21. So we have 210. So 1010 is transition. But we also have that two energy. Two is choices. It's decisions. It's which way are we going to go. It's coupling together. And then we have the one. One is a new beginning. Two plus one, three. Very powerful number. Celebration and also creativity. The world is things are done. The job is completed. Whatever needed to be done is done. So what, is, what does that have to do with religion? What does it have to do with the government? Um, you know, it, these are both major arcanas. These are both universal energies. But whatever it is, it's done. Now what we have to do is either we rest we, you know, we, we just kind of think back. We um, contemplate a little bit. The other thing, though, with the world card is that we take our lessons that have been learned and now we share them. We share them with others. So, but, but a lot of times between that, there is that resting period and then we get ready to move on again. But there is a sense of completion with the world. There is a sense of um, you've, done, you've gone through a lot of the trials Again, you know, these two being connected, you know, that's going to be interesting. Let's see what this card has. Then we come to this reverse card. This is a, um, you know, like I said, reverse, well, I have said, reverse cards have a little stronger energy. This is a minor arcana, but this is the Three of Cups. And the Three of Cups, three again, I talked about that. There's the power of three, saying something three times, doing something three times. 
and you know it, it you know having two other people with you as you all come into agreement it's also like i said celebration it's also creativity cups is our water energy it's cancer pisces scorpio fluid emotional very spiritual energy too we are in cancer right now we do have our cancer full our cancer new moon on the 28th and that will be at 10:52 uh, um, 10.52 p.m. It does bring a new uh, season for us. So there could be a very, you know, there that things are moving. There, you know, there these, these two are the ones to watch, but this is the one how we're dealing with it on the earth. And again, the new moon is on that 28th, 10.52. Now we also have early in the day, earlier in the day on the 28th, we have Neptune, going retro in Pisces. It's not strongly there yet, but it is. So that, you know, Pisces again, Pisces season, transitioning into Aquarius, but it's not like a light switch that just, you know, flips on. You know, it has, it's more of a dimmer switch, and sometimes we make it a little lighter, sometimes we make it a little darker. Neptune is about secrets, dreams. Um, Pisces is also. So, you know, Pisces is, like I said, Pisces is about, um, we've been 2,000 years in the age of Pisces, which has been about religion and um, government. So, you know, so we've got something going on with that one, too. Who's to say? We will see. But this is about celebration. This is lifting your cup. This is enjoying whatever this is. Um, this, And again, there is a lot of movement with this energy here. So now, you know, let's see. Let me know what you're thinking about this. Let me know what you're thinking about this. And, you know, the Hierophant, I'm a little, you know, I'm a Leo, so it's kind of like I'm a little bit rebellious against this cusp of Cancer, Moon in Pisces, um, and then my Venus is in Gemini. So, you know, and oh, we're going into, Venus is turning into Gemini. So I've got a little bit of it all. I do have some Earth signs and Earth energy there. I think something's in Virgo. Can't remember. Anyway, let's see what we have. Higher power, what can you... What can, oh, we've got a couple of cards that have fallen on the floor. And like I said, when they pop, we have to read them. Okay, let's see. Okay, good, come on, come on. Okay, so now, and they fell like this. So now we have justice. This is Major Arcana again. And this is Justice card. Justice, you know, this could be, this could relate back to the Hierophant, could relate back to the world. We have a 1-1. One, one you know, new beginning, new beginning, 10 transition, one plus one, two. We've talked about what that is, decisions, choices, justice. Justice could be very um, in the in the um, natural. It could also be in the supernatural. It could be karma being um, fulfilled, karma being met. It could also be justice coming to this world. So let's see what the next one is. Oh, okay. Now we have, and this is good. I love this one. This is the 10 of earth. 10 again, transitional energy. So we've got some ones going on with that. Um, Earth, Pentacles, um, Virgo, Capricorn. Remember, Pluto's in Capricorn. And I do feel like we're coming to that part where Pluto now has to do some rebuilding in Capricorn. Or Capricorn's kind of saying, enough is enough. We have to do it. But it's not necessarily going to be quick. It's not necessarily going to be easy. But the 10 of Earth actually is a very positive energy it's a very, you know, it's a very uh, stable energy, too. So, and our last one is, again, we have that three of cups, the three of water. So there's confirmation. So whatever's going on, even if we're feeling, even if we don't necessarily see the outcome, it does feel, especially in the um, spiritual and the supernatural world, it does feel like there is positive energies moving, positive things happening, celebra celebratory energy. You know, I'm always surprised. I'm I'm always thinking that I'm going to come in and like, oh my goodness, Henny Penny, the sky is falling. And then the cards say that things are moving. Things are moving the way the divine wants them to do, the way higher power God is, you know, things are working out the way they're supposed to be working out. But again, we get the three of water. We get the three of cups, which is the same energy. And it's all about celebration. Okay always interesting anyway let me know what you think also to you know like 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 please like because that moves the um 
algorithm thingy or something it gets the video seen more so thank you but also you know besides liking share subscribe click on the bell for notifications do all the things you need to do comment let me know what you think about this one because um there, there there's a lot of hidden layers with this and um i still go back you know the thing is though the three of cups and the three of water see these are universal energies these become what's going on more around us. So, um, you know, I would say with the Ten of Earth and I would say with the celebration, even if things don't make sense, don't let fear guide you. Don't let fear rule you. Remember fear, tool of the devil. So don't let that happen. And, you know, I do feel like even, even if you feel like things are not necessarily going the way you want, laugh. Laugh in the face of the devil. Laugh in the face of the evil energies. Okay, that rise that brings our vibration to a higher level. Okay, so anyway, I will start our videos now, and like I said, there will be a link where you can just bypass all of this. Thank you. Hello, my Aquariuses. So, what do you think? I mean, I feel like we are making, we are going through that transition into going from Pisces, Pisces, the age of Pisces, to the age of Aquarius. It's just not going to be very quick. <laughs> and that Saturn, you know, my Saturn in Aquarius, wow, it, it wants to really open our eyes, doesn't it? Anyway, so what do you think about that? Let me know. Okay, let's go on and see. What does higher power want my Aquarius to know? I just feel like you're, you know, I do feel like you're, you know, you're growing, you're sprouting. Um, I feel like the plant energy, you know, like kind of breaking through the bud um, is breaking through. I feel like things are, you are coming into some big, bigger changes. So let's see for this week, though, what does higher power have to say for my Aquariuses? My Aquariuses, what are you saying? What are higher power? What do you want to say to Aquarius? One, two, and three, three cards. Okay, first card is Knight of Gabriel. So Knight's underlying energy, because court cards have this, two energies. The one that's being, you know, the Gabriel and then the underlying. Knight's underlying is fire. Um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Now Aries, what Mars and, Mars and Jupiter are in Aries, so those are very strong stuff going on for you. Positive energies pushing you forward. Sagittarius, we just had that full moon, and we're about to go into, and in just a little bit, you know, we will be going into Leo season. So this is, and then Leo is the seventh house, okay? So there is, you know, there's a lot of big push energy. Knights are directional. So once you get moving, once you tell them where to go, they're going to go. So fire energy, passionate, very burning, very determined, very committed, very much a it's t I, I've got to get up. I've got to move. I cannot stay where I'm at anymore. I want adventure. I want changes. I want some positive energy going on. And I am willing to ride into wherever it is I need to ride into to get this. So there's going to be the energies will be pushing you. Now you have to make sure that you want to go where they're pushing you. Because remember, they're directional. And once you start, it's like a cascade. It'll be harder for you to stop. OK, so this is one, you know, this is one of those times that, you know, you, it's just like once it starts, things move, things move. You can't go back anyway. The knight of Gabriel is confident, enthusiastic, courageous, charismatic. Take OK, time to take action. Great passion for a cause instinctively knowing just what to do. So there is a lot of um, intuition here. There is just kind of like, you know, just once you get started, Again, you may not even know why you're going the direction you're going. You just know you've got to do what you got to do. But again, too, once it starts, it's really hard to back paddle. Okay, next card is the Eight of Raphael. Well, but next to the next to the Knight of Gabriel, it looks like you're going into the right direction. So Eight, unli uh, un unlimited opportunities, unlimited possibilities. So there's lots of things out there. Raphael is that water energy, Cancer, New Moon. So there is Make Your Wishes. Put that out there. Um, you know, it's also Pisces. It's also Scorpio. Scorpio has a lot of stuff. Pisces has some stuff. Remember, Neptune is, you know, going retrograde. So there is a lot of the water energy pushing you. The aid of Raphael is just kind of figuring, it's, figuring out where to do, what to do, where to go. 
the eight of Raphael, besides being very emotional and you know also too spiritual, uh, is just kind of trying to figure things out. The knight though has it. The knight just takes you know you're you're just kind of like you know the eight of Raphael is kind of like, oh. I wonder if I start this new business, if this will, and then all of a sudden the knight comes in and you're starting a new business, okay? So it's kind of the eight of Raphael is like, I wonder, or should I, or what do you think? Maybe, you know, where, how do I feel about this? And then that knight just takes over and just really the next thing you know, you're in a new job, new relationship of some sort. And remember, relationships could be personal, could be intimate, could be a job could be something to do with family. The aid of Raphael just has like these, I wonder if, and then that knight just takes over and rides, and, and really, it's like, it's like, this is the way we're going. Anyway, the aid of Raphael, there is something better waiting for you. Do what you know is right for you, a spiritual quest. Next card. The Queen of Gabriel. So here you are. Here you are. This is an emotional energy going... I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. The knight comes in and just basically says, yeah, enough wondering. Let's do, let's do. And then the queen of Gabriel, queen's underlying energy is water energy, so emotional, caring energy, but Gabriel is that fire energy again. The, the um, queen of Gabriel says, well, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this big. We're not, you know, it's not, you know, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this big. We're going to make a big splash. We're going to believe in ourselves. So again, this is that emotional quandary. This is that, I wonder, I just wonder. But then the knight and the queen are like, yeah, we're doing this. We're doing this. And this brings up the excitement. This brings that excitement up of new change, new possibilities. But the queen, the queen of Gabriel is all of, is bigger than life. So the knight gets things moving. The aid of Raphael is kind of like, should I, should I? But then the queen just kind of like, you should, and you're going to, and we're going to do this really big. This isn't going to just be, this isn't going to be half-baked. Half, you know, half, you know, this isn't going to be, this is, this is, we're pulling out all the stops, okay? So this could be, this could even be as simple as, oh, I think I'm going to have a party for somebody. And then all of a sudden, it's not just a small little intimate gathering that, you know, you kind of get together, you know, two or three people. All of a sudden, it's a big, um, it's a big to-do kind of, that's, that's the kind of energy I'm getting with this, my Aquarius is. It's like, it, it becomes bigger, it becomes brighter, it becomes bolder, okay? And this is the energies that is going to be pushing you next week, or this week. Here we go. So, passionate, charming, brilliant, independent. You can do anything right now. Go after what you want. The ability to attract helpful people. So while I use the party as the example, because I hope that makes sense, it's like, oh, I think we should have a little party. You know, maybe, you know, celebrate somebody's you know, birthday, retirement, whatever it is. And, it, you know, like maybe two, three people, maybe meet, you know, after work, have pizza, something like that. It becomes, you know, it becomes bigger, brighter, bolder. And you seem to be the author of it. You seem to be the one that's, uh, that's pushing the energies. It's like all these ideas are flooding you. And again, I'm not saying it's a party. I'm using that as an example. It could be starting that new business. It could be um, a, you know, changing your job. It could be um, buying a house. It could just be, you know, oh, well, we're going to get this little house. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, a bigger house. Oh, so it's just something that starts out maybe small and, and gets bigger. Okay, guardian angels. For our Aquariuses, what do you have for us? What do you want to say about our Aquariuses? Here we go. This one is reversed. Seven of emotion. So seven of emotion. So seven, again, do we have seven? No, seven um, you know, is basically a divine number. It's a divine umbrella, divine covering. Emotion is cups, Raphael energy. And this is basically giving you so many choices. And you now need to decide, what am I going to do? So whatever this is, whatever this thought process is, it's going to develop into something more concrete, more what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And once you, fig once you decide to make that step, the knight and the queen take over. <coughs> so, sorry about that. Hmm. Anyway, the knight and the queen take over and really, but it all comes down to 
what do you decide upon? So your angels are asking you to make an important decision that you've been putting off. And remember, I told you, once you take the step, it's, it's, it's like it just, poof, it, it gets bigger. It's likely you know which choice you should make, but you're procrastinating. So don't upset, so you don't upset someone else. Ask heaven for guidance and then make the choice that celebrates who you are. Anyway, that's interesting. Celebrates who you are. So it's like, you know, like I said, once you make the choice, once you make the decision, it, it's kind of like it, you put it out to the universe, put it out to God's source, and it's like, okay, we got it. We're, you know, just enjoy the ride now. Enjoy the ride. But you do have to make the decision. Here we go. Let's see what we have here. What crystal or energy would be helpful for my Aquariuses. Here we go. Onyx. We've been getting a lot of the darker stones, so I guess we need to absorb some of the fear and some of the um, negativity. So, seeing the future, responsibility, stamina, self-mastery. I like that. Seeing the future, responsibility. Anyway, my Aquariuses, now that <clears throat> I can breathe again, Anyway, my Aquariuses, take a moment. Do that like thing. Everybody like. Everybody like. Let's break that algorithm and get things moving. Besides liking, share, subscribe, click on the bell. Most importantly, and this really is, know, my Aquariuses, that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.